we want to shift gears now and go into the lung um, with Dr. Kazuo Takayami, uh, Takayama, who is a junior associate a professor at uh, Kira and Kyoto. Um, and he um, earned his PhD um, from Osaka University and has also started his lab there between 2018 and 20, and then switched over to become faculty at Kyoto University. And he's focusing on generating um, bronchial epithelial cells and alveolar epithelial cells from human ES and iPSCs um, to, um, with the goal of treating respiratory infections and of course now um, SARS-CoV-2. Um, so the title of his talk is COVID-19 Re Research Using IPS Cells and Organoids. Um, thank you, Kazuo. The, the, the stage is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, hello, I'm Kazuo Takayama from the SAIRA at Kyoto University. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to make a presentation. And today I'm going to talk about our COVID-19 research project using human IPS cells and organoid. The COVID-19 patient was first found in December in 2019 in China. In February of 2020, ICTV named this new coronavirus as SARS-CoV-2, and WHO named this disease as COVID-19. Under this circumstance, I started my laboratory on March 1st. On March 11th, WHO declared a pandemic and many cities were locked down. As shown in red, the number of COVID-19 patients is about 0.1 billion, and the death toll is about 2.3 million. The number of COVID-19 patients and deaths is approximately 1,000 times higher than SARS and MERS. So this result indicates that SARS-CoV-2 is more dangerous virus than other coronaviruses. Although the number of COVID-19 patients and deaths continue to grow, but no effective treatment has, be, has yet been developed. To develop a therapeutic drug for COVID-19, an excellent model for drug discovery is necessary. And this slide describes how SARS-CoV-2 enters the cells. First, SARS-CoV-2 binds to the receptor ACE2, and next, the protease TMPRS2 cleaves the spike protein into S1 and S2 domains. And finally, SARS-CoV-2 uses the S2 domain to fuse the viral membrane with the cell membrane. And therefore, the SARS-CoV-2 infection is highly dependent on the expression of the MPRSS2 and ACE2. Before conducting the SARS-CoV-2 infection experiments, we perform bioinformatic analysis. We examine the sequence and the structure of viral spike protein, which plays an important role in viral entry. We compare the sequence and structure of spike protein between SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2. The binding force between the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein between the uh, between the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and ACE2 was estimated to be 10 times higher than the, that of SARS-CoV-1. Because SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2 have different characteristics. characteristics so it is essential to use SARS-CoV-2 in COVID-19 study. There are many in vitro and animal models that can be used in SARS-CoV-2 research. Viral cells, which are commonly used in SARS-CoV-2 studies, can efficiently replicate SARS-CoV-2, but these cells are African green monkey kidney cells, not human cells. So therefore, we consider that it is necessary to use a model that can more accurately reproduce human physiological condition than the viral cells. Because SARS-CoV-2 does not infect mice, many researchers are using hamster, ferrets, and cynomogus monkey. However, it is difficult to use these animals in large numbers in the infection experiment so the organoid that can reflect human physiological conditions are expected to be an attra attractive resource. Because COVID-19 is a respiratory infection, we decided to use a model of bronchi. We used two models in this study. One is the bronchial organoid, the, and the other is the air liquid interface model. Organoid is very good model, but they have inside-out structure. In other words, the apical side 
is on the lumen side of the organoid. An organoid, a suitable model for reproducing viral infection from the blood vessel side. On the other hand, the viral infection on the other hand, the viral infection from the apical side can be performed in the bronchial organoid derived air liquid interface model. Therefore, in our research, we conducted SARS CoV 2 infection experiment by using these two models. In our study, we generated human bronchial organoid from commercially available bronchial epithelial cells. Bronchial organoids can be generated only in 10 days, and they, can, they also have high replication potential, so they will be an ideal model for drug screening. First, we perform immunostaining analysis in our organoid. Our organoid were positive for cytochrome 5 and acetylated alpha tubulin, suggesting that our organoids include basal stem cells and also ciliated cells. And this picture indicates that the basal stem cells are, are located outside of the organoid, and ciliated cells are located in the lumen side of the organoid. And we also obtained the 10 images of our bronchial organoid. 9 plus 2 arrangements, cilia, and microvilli could be observed. And 10 results also show that our bronchial organoid have bronchial characteristics. SARS-CoV-2 used in our study was isolated from COVID-19 patient in Japan. In this study, uh, only one strain of uh, SARS-CoV-2 has been used, but in our laboratory, we have many SARS-CoV-2 strains that were uh, isolated in many countries. Here we performed the SARS-CoV-2 infection experiment by using our bronchial organoid. All infection experiments were conducted in BSS3 facility. After the infection, intracellular viral genome and also the progeny virus could be detected. Therefore, it was therefore it is uh, it was shown that the cells called the infection and also replication could be evaluated in our bronchial organoid. However, the production efficiency of prog progeny virus was very low. After five days from the infection, we examined the viral spike protein expression in the infected organoid. The viral spike positive cells were localized in the outer edge of the organoid. This data suggests that the most cells were not infected with the coronavirus. In addition, no infected cells could be observed more than one week after the infection. Um, air liquid interface model was used to mimic the viral infection from the luminal side of the bronchi. Expanded bronchial organoids were dissociated and, and seeded into transfer insert and culture for five days. By using the transfer, ciliated cells are placed on the apical side and the basal stem cells are placed on the basal side. Air liquid interface models were infected with the SARS-CoV-2 and then culture for two days. Air liquid, interface, air liquid interface model was infected from the apical side and the production of the infectious virus in the air liquid interface model was more than 2000 times higher than that in the bronchial organoid. And immunostaining data shows that the viral spike protein co-localized with the acetylated alpha gibberin, which is the ciliated cell marker, but not with cytochrome 5, which is for the basal stem cell marker. So these results suggest that the SARS-CoV-2 efficiently replicate in ciliated cells, but not in basal stem cells. For the virus to replicate in the bronchial epithelial cell layer, the virus needs to access from the lumen side of the uh, bronchial epithelial layer. Using the air liquid interface model, we, investigating, we investigated whether the process of the viral infection mediated destruction of bronchial epithelial cells could be observed. After generating the bronchial organoid from bronchial basal stem cells, Air liquid, interface mo air liquid interface models was uh, established. Before the viral infection, both ciliated cells and basal stem cells are present in the air liquid interface model. 
at day seven after the viral infection, the associated alpha tubing and viral spike positive cells were not observed, suggesting that the CAT cells die due to the viral infection. On the other hand, the cytokeratin 5 positive vessel stem cells survived seven days after the viral infection. And 50 days after from the viral infection, surviving vessel stem cells could differentiate into uh, CAT cells and forming a bronchial epithelial cell layer. This observation suggests that the vessel stem cells plus, plays an important role in the repair of the bronchial epithelial layer after the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Next, we search for the factors which is required for the vessel stem cell to regenerate the bronchial epithelial layer. Because the metal used in these culture models contains many growth factors, so we investigated which growth factors are required for the replication and differentiation of basal stem cells. By removing FGF10 from the medium, the production of the infectious virus in the air liquid interface model increased. In addition, due to the absence of FGF10, uh, surviving basal stem cells did not proliferate or differentiate into CAT cells. On the other hand, if FGF2 and FGF, FGF2 and FGF7 was removed from the medium, the surviving basal stem cells can proliferate and differentiate into CAT cells, as shown here. So these results suggest that FGF10, but not FGF2 or FGF7, is essential for surviving basal stem cell to regenerate the bronchial epithelial cell layer. And I would like to introduce the ongoing experiment. We are now trying to generate airway epithelial cells and alveolar epithelial cells from human APS cells for a SARS-CoV-2 study. In addition, we are trying to generate a large model with vascular structures by using the organ or chip technology. And our, res our research was introduced in Nature News and also in Cell Stem Cell. If you are interested, please see this article. In the second half of my presentation, I will introduce the SARS-CoV-2 study using the iPS cells, iPS cells. Human iPS cells can be established from almost any individuals. At CIRA, iPS cells have been established for over uh, 500 individuals. So by conducting cell the infection experiments by using IP this iPS cell panel, we may be able to not only reproduce into individual differences in COVID-19, but also clarify the cause of inter-individual differences. Because it is time consuming to differentiate, differentiate somatic cells from human iPS cells, so we investigated the possibility of performing cells-CoV-2 infection experiments in undifferentiated iPS cells. Now first, we examined the expression level of viral receptor and protease in undifferentiated iPS cells. The expression of H2 was very low, but that of CD147 was very high in undifferentiated iPS cells. And CD147 is also reported as a coronavirus receptor. And the team PRSS2, a protease, was expressed in undifferentiated iPS cells. However, um, we, in, we infected undifferentiated iPS cells with SARS CoV 2 in the BSS3, but the morphology of iPS cell colony did not change. Also, no, no cells expressing nuclear capsid. Nucleocapsid nuclear proteins were observed as shown here. So therefore, this result indicates that the SARS-CoV-2 does not infect undifferentiated iPS cells. Because human ACE2 and TMPRSS2 are both known to be an important SARS-CoV-2 infection, so human ACE2 and TMPRSS2 were overexpressed in undifferentiated iPS cells. By overexpressing ACE2, a large amount of infectious virus in iPS cells were detected after the SARS-CoV-2 infection. On the other hand, the effect of TMPRSS2 overexpression was limited. 
Therefore, its expression is required for SARS-CoV-2 to infect human IPS cells. And two days after the SARS-CoV-2 infection, cell fusion was observed. And four days after the SARS-CoV-2 infection, many of the cells were dead. In this study, we use adenovirus vectors to overexpress ACE2. The PDBAC system was also used in our study, but sufficient um, viral replication could not be confirmed. And recently, it is also reported that the efficient SARS-CoV-2 replication is very high in mice transduced with ACE2 expressing adenovirus vectors. So it is considered that cells and animals expressing a SU using uh, AD vectors may be suitable for SARS-CoV-2 infection experiment. And 10 images of a 2 iPS cells infected with SARS-CoV-2 was shown in this slide. A virus particle attempting to invade the cells could be observed. In addition, viral particle budding in the intermediate between the ER and Golgi, which is, called, which is known as ERGIC. And furthermore, DMV was also observed, and DMV is a double membrane vesicle, which are central hub for viral RNA synthesis. And this image shows that the life cycle of SARS-CoV-2 can be observed in ACE2 iPS cells. And we also perform immunostaining analysis of ACE2 iPS cells which were infected with coronavirus. By infecting the cells with SARS-CoV-2, nucleocapsid positive cells were observed. Some of the infected cells had fused with each other, and this image was taken two days after the coronavirus infection, but by three days after the infection, all cells were nucleocapsid positive. And we also perform RNA sequence analysis in uninfected and infected A2 iPS cells. And the color dot in the volcano plot indicate the, indicate the genes whose expression levels were changed significantly more than fourfold. And we are currently analyzing the function of the genes whose expression levels were changed. And we also we also confirmed the gene expression levels of undifferentiated markers which remained almost unchanged after the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And next, we examine whether ACE2 iPS cells could be used for drug screening. We tested eight drugs using, uh, used in the COVID-19 clinical trials. And various cells were used as control cells in this experiment. After exposing the cells to various concentration of the drugs, the number of viral RNA copies in the cell culture supernatant was quantified. A sigmoid curve was created and EC50 value was calculated. Among eight drugs, the antiviral effect of remdesivir was the strongest. On the other hand, the chloroquine and favipiavir, which is known as Avigan, did not exhibit, uh, uh, did not inhibit the viral replication at all. For drugs other than interferon beta, the effect of drugs was more strong, strongly detected in a two iPS cells as compared with viral cells. Although we don't have enough time, so we skip the details, but we were able to confirm the antiviral effect of RDRT inhibitors, such as remdesivir and EIDD, and TMPRSS2 inhibitors, such as Camostat and Nafamostat, in A2 iPS cells. So indicating that the A2 iPS cells can be used to evaluate COVID-19 drug candidates. And next, we perform SARS-CoV-2 infection experiment using human ES and APS cells, which were established from eight donors. The replication efficiency of the virus was different among the human ES and APS cell lines. And currently, we are investigating the cause of this difference. By using the APS cell panel owned by SIRA, we are planning to clarify the cause of inter-individual differences in COVID-19. 19. As Dr. Yamanaka introduced in his presentation, 
uh, Syra has established iPSLs from patient with severe and mild, mild COVID-19 patient, COVID-19. By using these iPSL lines, we will introduce the cause of inter-individual difference, differences in COVID-19 symptoms. And recently, GWA study using the cells from COVID-19 patient has been performed in US, in the US, UK, Spain, and Italy. So we would like to use these iPS cells to clarify the function of candidate genes that were obtained in COVID-19 GWAS study. And today is our web presentation, so I cannot meet you, but if you have any comment or question, feel free to email me. And we are looking for the opportunity to collaborate with the participant of this symposium. And this is the last slide. First of all, I would like to thank the lab members for their hard work. And I, I want to thank all of our collaborators. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any question. Thank you very much. This was a great presentation. Uh, maybe I start the questions. Um, Charlie Rice published that uh, iPSCs are resistant to viruses because of high ISG expression constitutively. Did you find this? I mean, your, your study seems to imply that it's right at the level of the ACE2 receptor expression and not necessarily ISG um, expression. I wonder whether maybe the variability you see between the different lines might be because of that and, uh, and whether you have specifically looked at that. Yeah, uh, we confirmed that there was no difference in the ACE expression level after the adenovirus uh, induced expression in various human ES and IPSL lines. However, the uh, induction level of ISG was different in the human ES and IPSL lines. So I think the um, resp response activity to the virus is different in between the uh, individuals. And you, you think that he published that paper originally in Cell because he, he just looked at a limited amount of, of, of patients and, and, and sort of missed some that had low ISG levels constitutively and still could get infected? Is that the idea? Yeah. Mm, uh, as you mentioned, the sum of the ISG expression uh, induction level was very uh, low okay. because the, uh, the uh, ORF3, that is the accessory, poten uh, accessory potency of SARS-CoV-2, uh, inhibit the induction of the interferon beta or uh, uh, interferon, type 1 interferon. So, mm, yeah, so we want to do such experiment by using many uh, human ES and IPSL lines. Okay, thank you. There's a question about um, infectious virus found in the blood. Um, do you have any experience in that or can answer that question? I mean, in general, it's regarded very low, but uh, do you have um, any insight into, um, you know, how the virus gets from the lung into the blood and potentially to secondary organs? Uh, we haven't uh, we haven't examined the viral expression uh, viral uh, viral amount in the blood, so I cannot give you the correct answer. But um, we want to examine the mechanism that the virus can invade the endothelial cells into the blood. So uh, we want to examine. Uh, about that phenotype, but phenotype by using the organ chip model that have the vascular structure and also the lung epithelial cells. Have you tried to flip the organoids inside out to infect intact? No, we uh, we already tried that kind of experiment, but uh, after removing the matrigel, we expected that the organoid could be up, uh, inside out structured, but we haven't succeeded yet. Okay, I think that this is it. Oh, um, what's the cause of the differences in the viral infection between different individuals? Did you check the combination between different drug candidates and their effect on the viral double-stranded RNA? Um, I think the um, difference in the viral infection between the different individuals 
the uh, the response to uh, typhi interferon was different among the human ES, human IPS lines. So I think um, uh, interferon related genes is, might be the cause of the difference in the individuals. And the second question. Um, Combinations of drugs. Oh, yeah, we already um, tested the combination of the drugs and um, in the single use of the drugs, the remdesivir was the best drugs. And by combinating remdesivir with interferon beta, the antiviral effect was more upregulated. So um, according to our data, we think that the combination with uh, remdesivir and interferon beta is the best uh, to show the antiviral effect. Mm 